Hello, welcome to whatever this is. Um, it's been a bit, but I want to do, I want to try a new format, basically. I have some little notes here. I have a kind of basic outline, but I don't have a full script. So I'm just going to talk for a bit um, about the ethics of creating online. Very broad topic, obviously, but I have thoughts about it. I don't have the brain power right now to develop them into a full script, but I wanted to make something anyway, wanted to get it out before school starts and things get real, real busy. So hopefully I'll be able to do that. Who knows? I've got less than a week to edit this. Um, but yeah, so essentially, I have like three main points. Um, one of those is about money. It's about like how to balance being responsible to yourself with being responsible to the people who give you money to create once you start gaining like patrons and donors and stuff like that. Um, another is about being responsible with how you use your audience, basically like Twitch raids, stuff like that. Uh, and then the third one is being responsible with the information that you distribute once you have a big enough audience that your words carry some influence. The influence that you have obviously depends on your size. Someone like me has considerably less influence than someone like PhilosophyTube, whose videos are used in classrooms. But no matter what, you should, like, you should always be prepared for something to blow up. You should be putting stuff out onto the internet that you are proud of and that you think would do good in the world if they gained the level of attention and influence to be able to do anything in the world. Part of that is giving credit to the people who you work with, not just like active collaborators or sources, but also like if you pull a tweet, if you pull a TikTok video from a creator. Now, if you're pulling from just like random people and not necessarily established creators, you're probably going to want to keep those anonymous, especially if you have a large following because say you're making a video about slur discourse or some shit, right? You don't want to pull a tweet from John from Northwest Ohio, recently out bisexual, says, oh, I don't know, maybe all queer men, all queer people should be able to say the F-slur, right? You don't want to send hate his way. And there are people who will hear that, regardless of what point you're making, they will hear that claim and they will take it and they will run with it and they will decide, oh, this is someone who should not have a platform, even if it is, again, John from Northwest Indiana with 20 followers on Twitter. Like, no one. But with established creators, people who are actively putting their opinions out on the internet, who are subjecting themselves to the scrutiny of the mob, for lack of a better term, it is always a good idea to give credit where credit is due. If you use their ideas, if you paraphrase them, and you can do that in a bunch of different ways. If you're writing a video essay, have a bibliography. If you don't have a script and you're just like going off of half-remembered things, link their video in the description or in a title card up there. Not sure if they, if those still exist actually, but link their video somewhere, link people to their channel, make it so that you're not profiting off of their labor especially when you're talking about things like slurs or um, anti-Semitism, any form of bigotry, because then it becomes emotional labor based off of people's oppression that you are profiting off of. And that, you know, to me, it just kind of seems a little bit worse <laughs> once you start doing that. You have a responsibility to the truth, right? If I were to come on and say that a well-known leftist creator is racist or something. Or if I were to come on here and misrepresent one of their points in such a way that seems racist, that's not ethical. It's not good. That is...
bad. Once you have an audience, you have a responsibility to treat that audience with respect, and part of that is telling them the truth and doing your due diligence to make sure that your claims are correct and that the viewpoints that you're espousing are either represented as entirely your own opinion or are, if you're presenting them as fact, backed up by research and evidence, etc. Or if you're presenting them as the opinions of another creator, check that those are actually the opinions of that creator. If you don't, especially if your audience is located in a place such as YouTube or TikTok that has a comment section, or if a significant part of the discussion around your work happens on a place like Twitter, you are liable to create an attack mob. And I talked about those a little bit in my parasocial relationships video, but those are harmful. They, like cause real harm to people. They make them lose money, they make people have to move, they dox people, and there are very few cases where doxing a creator on the internet would be okay. It's... I can't think of anything that would warrant that level of vitriol. Once you're a creator, once you have an audience, you have a responsibility to tell the truth, to present your opinions as opinions, to present fact as fact, and not conflate the two when it would be disingenuous to do so. And you have a responsibility to your audience and to your fellow creators, colleagues of a sort, to treat them with respect and allow them privacy, dignity, credit for their work, and a freedom from harassment. Once you gain a certain level of following, you have an ability to cause a harassment campaign. You can do it unintentionally, you can do it intentionally, but you should always be cautious of it when you are making content. Another inevitable piece of being a large creator is that you are probably going to start making money. You can actively prevent this if it is truly something that you do not want to do, but at this point it is pretty standard for most large creators to have a Patreon page or to have a Cash App or Venmo set up for tips. If you live stream, there are Super Chats or probably an equivalent on Twitch. I don't know how Twitch works. But there are ways to make money. YouTube's um, partner program, monetization, TikTok's creator fund, um, as bad as that is. See Hank Green's video for more. With money comes extra obligations from an ethical standpoint. Because as much as it is true that creators do not owe anything to their fans and vice versa, when you start collecting money from your fans, especially actively through something like Patreon or stream tips, etc., you do owe them something because at that point you have become at that point you have become a proprietor of a service. You are offering your opinions essentially or based on your Patreon model, you are offering a subscription to you various portions of your life. You are getting the money that allows you to live through creating your content, putting your opinions online, and making other things available. Whether you promise a video a month, whether you promise a monthly poll, a monthly discussion post, if you have a Discord channel, you have obligations there, and at the same time, this is a piece where it gets complicated. At the same time, you still have the obligations I've mentioned before, and you still have the obligation to yourself to take care of yourself and be a functioning human being and to take breaks when you need it. What I see a lot of creators do when, at some point, inevitably they burn out and need to step back for their own well-being, is they take a break, but they don't pause their Patreon payments. They don't 
provide any value to their patrons. What's wrong? They aren't providing any value to their patrons during that time, and that can sometimes last for months. Obviously, if people just want to give you money, that's fine. But on a platform like Patreon, if you're going to take a break from making content and your Patreon is structured around rewards that depend on that content, you have an ethical responsibility to continue providing those benefits or to provide an option to cease payment for the time. Obviously, people can cancel whenever they want, yes, but another aspect of parasocial relationships, especially once you've formed any form of interpersonal connection with a creator, which can happen easily on a platform like Discord, which many, many creators offer as a perk on their Patreon, you feel like you'd be letting them down, especially if you know that your support is something that they depend on to pay bills. And, like, uh, it's not your problem if your favorite creator is paying their bills. They are likely an adult. They are a fully formed human being who is responsible for their own well-being. You are not responsible for them, and if they are not providing the service that you have paid for, it should be your right to cancel that payment. It's something I see a lot of people missing, and I think it just kind of gets... I think, again, it's an aspect that gets lost when we talk about the, like, creators are not your friends. Yes, creators are not your friends. Creators are... If anything, you are a creator's client. If there is any form of interpersonal relationship there, that is what it starts as. The relationship between a business owner and a patron of the business. And it's just... It's a part of creating ethics that I see lost often, in part because it does have to do with people's ability to live. You need to pay your bills somehow, and you have to balance that with taking care of yourself and not burning out in what is a very demanding and creative profession. As an example of a way to take a step back, take care of yourself, create ethically for yourself, and still provide some value to the patrons who have paid for your content is Lindsay Ellis, who, if you remember my parasocial relationship video, or if you were on Twitter in, like, May? February? I don't know when stuff happened. She faced a mass canceling over a tweet comparing Avatar The Last Airbender and Ryan The Last Dragon, and about six months later took a step back from YouTube content for the foreseeable future. She has posted on her Patreon extensively about how she has failed to find a plan to move forward. She initially thought she could maybe continue creating content for Nebula, but even that feels too close. Too much inviting scrutiny. It's bad for her. Um, she then posted a couple other failed updates, and now from her Patreon page, it seems that she is offering semi-regular live streams to her patrons. She has another added level of ethics in that no fewer than eight people depend on her for healthcare and benefits, which is stressful. But <laughs> she has found a way to balance all of these while hopefully keeping herself in a relatively healthy, stable state of mind. I'm happy for her. I'm happy for anyone who has the ability to keep themselves healthy and sane while maintaining the obligation that they have put themselves into. So yeah, that's this. I don't know how long this is. 15 minutes? 20 minutes? I don't know. Um, I have had... Well, I, I don't have a thesis here. Um, to be clear, I just have rambling thoughts about this topic and wanted to make a video. Because, yeah, the Heartstopper video has done insanely well. Um, right now it is sitting at, let's see. I am running everything here. Well, that's not true. I'm recording audio off of my laptop over there. 
but I am running the notes and such off of a at old, old um, Chromebook, and it is not happy with me. It thinks I should be doing much less on it. And what I am doing is I have a Google Docs tab open and I have YouTube Creator Studio open. Um, okay, yeah, the Heartstopper video has done insanely well. We have over 50 subscribers now. Thank you all so much. It has almost 3,000 views and it's been going steady. That's a little terrifying. Starting to level off. But yeah, thank you all so much for that. I promise I will at some point write a new video. Uh, I have had insane writer's block and I have like three half written scripts. I have an email from CJ the X that I am going to work into one of them. I have a lot of research that I've done. Something will come out at some point, hopefully soon. I'm not going to make promises though. School's about to start. Everything's about to get real busy. Uh, I have a new job. It's so fun. There will be some credit stuff after this. Probably music. It's mostly me. This is all me, actually. I haven't shown anyone else the notes, but yeah. Thank you for watching. You're amazing. Have a lovely day. Be nice in the comments.